there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. And when did you get married? I was married when I was 14. And how many wives do you want to have? As many as I can. What would you think would be a good number? Mm, 12. 12. Don't you think that would be rather a lot of women to have to talk to and look after? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that would be nice? Because a big family is a nice family. Tom was uh, 35. I had my parents' permission because they thought Tom was a very good man and, and they could see his heart, that he was not just out to take advantage of a young girl. He wanted to build a family and, and we, we really did sincerely, truly love each other. I met Tom when I was just 15 years old and I spent a month in his home working for his wife and I got to know his family and I became very close with Linda. And who did Tom marry after you? Tom married my mother after me. How did you meet Tom? My older sister was married to Tom. And uh, I lived in southern Utah. And she brought him down to meet us. And things just went from there. <laughs> I thought that he was strange because he was an outsider when he came. Maybe that's why I fell in love with him because he was different. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I met Tom when my mother moved to Salt Lake and married Tom. So you were Tom's stepdaughter? Yes, I was. I didn't see him as a father figure for very long. <laughs> I think I fell in love with him right away. and. I have been married to him for nine years now. He let me know that he was serious, and if I was serious, then I needed to let him know. And so I told him, yes, I, I want to marry you. I want to be your wife. From the time that we first kissed till the time we were married, it was about two days. So it went quite fast. He reached over and took hold of my chin and then kissed me. It was very warm. Nice. And how long was that after your sister Carrie had married him? Um, two or three weeks. Two or three weeks. And then after that, I guess the next thing that happened was uh, they had a reception for Carrie and Tom, his family, and everybody got together and a lot of my family came. And after the reception on the way back, uh, Carrie, Carrie wanted me to marry Tom too, and so she says, well, why don't you sit in the back seat with, with uh, Hannah, Tom and I sit in the back seat. And we were sitting in the back seat, and, and, it, and it just came up. I was looking at his eyes, and I just loved his eyes, and I said, I want my children to have eyes like yours. And he says, I know how we can make that possible. Tom is 51 years old. His three eldest children from a previous marriage have left home. He now has 26 children aged 12 years and under living at Greenhaven. I first saw this property, I hated it. It was ugly. It was dry and barren and brushy. And I wanted someplace beautiful and pretty. But we were forced to move our home, and we had to get it parked somewhere. This was the only place I could buy with nothing down. And so we bought it, and we began scraping all this brush off. And uh, these mobile homes are only temporary. They're like tents. We moved one out, and it got destroyed. The wind came along and demolished the first homes we brought. So we bought more old mobile homes. But 
in time, we'll have these homes parked in a circle all the way around here. And all this in the middle will be lawn and trees and flowers with little benches to sit on and, and a playground for the children. And they'll be able to come out of any one of the homes and go into this inner courtyard area. And we won't have to worry about them wandering off into the bushes with the coyotes and the snakes. And they'll all be right here. why you choose to marry the wives so young? I've married the wives that I have because those are the wives that God brought to me and, and informed me that these are the girls that I should marry. These girls wanted to marry me and demonstrated their extremely rare quality of being capable of handling responsibilities at such an early age. You know, a lot of people have criticized me soundly for marrying young girls, and I, I agree that there's hardly any girls of that age that are ready for marriage, but these girls were. These girls have demonstrated that they really were not too young because they have succeeded in building a successful relationship in a marriage, which people sometimes twice their age or more have not been able to do. Each of Tom's wives have a trailer where they have a bedroom in it. And um, this is where mine is. This is a kitchen, which is going to be turned into a walk-in closet. And uh, we'll put up a wall and it'll isolate itself from my bedroom, which is right here. And it used to be a living room. It's now my large bedroom. This is where I spend my evenings when I'm not with Tom. And Tom has his own bedroom, and each of his wives spend their nights there. This room is my bedroom. And um, I spend all my nights here. Each wife uh, comes here at their, according to their own schedule and spends their time with me. Um, the only furniture I really have in here is my amoir. You may notice there's, there's seven drawers, so there's uh, room for two more wives there if things happen that way. Do you ever feel promiscuous? <laughs> promiscuous? You mean with the wives that I have? No, I've entered into solemn covenants with the wives that I have. We've had, uh, each wife has been married to me by a very special and sacred religious ceremony. And so um, I don't feel the least bit immoral or promiscuous in what I'm doing. My covenants and my, and my uh, bonds with each wife is just as sacred as it is among any person of any other faith. Down the hall here, I have my nursery. And this is where Lonnie and Elizabeth spend their time. This is for Elizabeth and Melanie. And um, this bedroom here is a spare bedroom. We're going to combine it with the bathroom bedroom and turn it all into a large bathroom. And here is where the B team girls spend their time. This is their bedroom. My name? Oh, Joseph. How old are you? Eight. And what team are you in? B team. <coughs> Who else is in the B team? Lauren, Mindy, and Kelly, and Sierra. Linda has Melvin, and then Johnny, and then Lauren, and then Philip, and then Rebecca, and Rosanna. And those are Linda's six. And then Shirley had seven children with me. She had Chris, and then Hiram, and then Sierra, and then Jerry, and then Alonzo, or Lonnie. And then she had the twins, Elizabeth and Melanie. And those are Shirley's. And then let's see, uh, next was Leanne. Leanne's first one was Kelly. And then she had Misty. And then Emerald. And then Hunter. And they're all named colors. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see, next was Carrie. And Carrie had Bonnie. And where is he? And then Wesley. And then Benjamin Franklin. And then Hannah has had two with me. She's had Sharon and Brigham Young. And those are all the children of each mother. All of us try to get pregnant at the same time. 
because we, we really like having children at the same age, close together, like five, four or five of them. And we've managed to do that several times. We're down to a, an E team now, starting from A, and every one of those teams are just unique in their own little way, and it's a lot of fun to have teams. I think that most people, when they see plural marriage, they see this horny old man that wants to have sex with young women. And that's not Tom. That's not him at all. It's a woman's choice. It's a woman's issue, you know. I mean, it's, it's more about our rights and our freedom than it is about his. I mean, we get to decide when we're going to have sex with him. He doesn't ask. It's not his place. It's a, young, it's a girl's place to choose her husband. And we chose Tom. I chose him. I, you know, he didn't ask me. He'd let me know that he was interested. But, but it was me that went to him and said, I'd like to be your wife. I do. I love him very much. I am very madly in love. <laughs> and my life would not be the same and I would be a very lonely woman if I had to live without him. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that. But if I had to I would. I hope that I hope that God never asked me to do that. <laughs> then I would then I would be forced to find out how strong I really am. <laughs> do you mind sharing him? Um No, I don't mind sharing Tom. Um he's a very good man and I and I would feel very selfish and very guilty if I, if I had him all to myself because he is very capable and of loving other women and taking care of them and, and feeling their needs. And, and he's a very good father and I would, feel, I would feel very selfish limiting him to just me and my children. Mm. What? No, it'll be about two weeks. Okay, are you ready? Is everybody here? Yep. Okay, Hannah, sneak around and sit down over there. Carrie? <coughs> Kelly, take over. Oh, person. <laughs> Children, you ready to sing? Brigham. Brigham, let's sing to Mother Hannah. You ready? Okay, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mother Hannah. Happy birthday to you. Stand up, stand up, stand up and take a bow and bow. Stand up, stand up, stand up and take a bow. How old are you now? How old are you now? How old are you now? Yay! At last, finally. What? The what? Tell her. Say heavy, heavy hangover. Heavy, heavy hangover with a knife and when you wish me something with a note on the end. I wish you a horse. A horse. £30,000 a year to feed, clothe and house all 33 of them. I wish you... Hmm... What do I wish you? I wish you a dolly named Emerald. <laughs> <laughs> Horsey. Do you want a horsey and a cow? And a cow? Okay. To preserve their fundamentalist way of life, the children have little contact with the outside world and are educated at home by their mothers. I wish you a husband that will treat you like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> 
Each of my wives have their, their own independent personalities. And, and I encourage them to, do the, to develop their personalities independently. I, I find that I relate with each one of them differently. Linda is uh, she's very level-headed. She's very mature. She's very intelligent and has a fantastic memory. Just so amazing in her abilities that I feel extremely fortunate and blessed to have her as a partner in my marriage. And Shirley is as devoted and diligent as any mother I've ever seen. I won great respect for Shirley because of that. Shirley's just a lot of fun to have around. <laughs> and um, Leanne keeps life really fun for the family and for me. Besides that, I really like the way she dresses. It's just fun to look at her walk by. <laughs> I, I get a thrill just out of watching her walk by. And uh, Carrie is, is such a stalwart. Uh, Carrie amazes me how she just diligently, devotedly works her heart out for this family without complaining, ever. Uh, in eight years of marriage with Carrie, we've never had an argument. Carrie's like the pillar that holds up the family. And uh, Hannah is uh, Hannah's an amazing girl. She's, she's athletic and she's strong and she's competitive and she's extremely committed to this family. It's just really dazzling to me to see how she is striving to do the best she can in this family. So you have five wives. They're all very attractive. They're young. They're very lively. How do you satisfy them? Uh, which aspect of satisf satisfaction are you talking about? I, I th I, there was a truck driver one time that uh, was talking to us on the CB radio, and, and he was talking to my wives and discovered that they were all married to the same man. And he was fascinated. And so uh, he, he asked me, how, how, do you, how do you do it? I'd like to get a bunch of wives. And I said, well, it's very simple. All you have to do is be able to satisfy the, all their physical needs. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. But he was only thinking of their sensual needs. He wasn't thinking of their, all their physical needs. I said, and you must be able to satisfy their intellectual needs, their emotional needs, and their spiritual needs. And if you can meet all of those needs, you'll find all kinds of women that will come to you. And he, when he really thought about it, he said, well, I don't want a bunch of wives that bad. You see, there's a, there's a great price to pay. But uh, were you referring to the, the sensual? The physical? Yes, yeah, and them as individuals, you know. I mean, oh. there's a big volume. Or all of, of their needs. Of, well, let's talk about the sensual needs first. There's a, the, the, that's a lot of sex, isn't it? A, lo mm. a lot of um, sensuality no, no, times I have, five. I, I have the average amount, and, and they're the ones that go without. Listen, stand up, sit up, sit up. We're going to do Miss Olu's cat. That's enough. Sit back. Leanne, put her out front. Sit back, please. Sit down. Quiet. Are you ready? How many? Raise your hand and don't say a word. If, you're, if you want to go on the safari. Okay? Has Philip gone to sleep already? Yes. Philip went to sleep. Wesley, do you want to do a safari? Okay, everybody. Get your gun. Put your gun on your shoulder. Okay. Got your binoculars? Put those on. Now, open the door careful. Look outside. Is it all clear? No. All clear? Okay. Let's go down the path. Our nights are scheduled on a rotational basis. Um, it's not up to Tom at all. It is left up to the wives. And we have all decided together that if it's just one right after another and in turn, then it would be a lot simpler to keep track of and also to help deal with 
you know, jealousy. And uh, when it is um, our night with Tom, it is totally up to the woman to initiate whether or not she wants to be intimate with him or not. Through the tall grass. Quiet, Misty. Oh, here's a tall tree. Let's climb it real slow. Keep climbing. Don't climb it fast. What was Tom like on your wedding night? Of course, I have to say he was experienced. <laughs> so he taught me and explained things. And one thing that he did is he would draw on my belly where the, the what? <laughs> that green one. I never get that part. But he would what? <laughs> Explain. Uh. <laughs> no, this isn't. Okay, let's not do this part. <laughs> what, he'd draw on your belly and tell you where a baby would be? Uh, well, how it works, actually. Like where the uterus is, where the ovaries are. <laughs> and would explain. Just, just explain to it to the reproductive system of the female. <laughs> Get your binoculars. Look all around. What do you see? See a lion? Oh no, quick, down the tree. In the water, swim the river, quick. Down the path. I see our cabin. Quick inside, shut the door. Unusual for a mother and daughter to be married to the same man. I've heard of a lot of them, but most people think it's wrong. I don't see anything wrong with it, really. <laughs> it, it's, it, it is kind of rare to have your mother marry your husband, but in some areas and regions it's not. But isn't it strange to see your mother going off to spend a night with your husband? It may sound very strange that to think that my mother was with my husband, but you have to realize that this is the way I believe life ought to be lived. And this is a very deeply held religion for me and my family. And through my whole childhood growing up, I was taught taught the values and the the reasons and the whys and the hows and and for me it was natural and what was it like to have two baby boys on the same day by the same man and be mother and daughter yourself well, she was <laughs> real mad at me yeah because I was first I was going to have the first born and <laughs> I, wasn't I had my her. baby in the morning <laughs> and she had hers in the evening and and I just moved over <laughs> She had yeah. hers in the same spot I had mine. <laughs> and they were both Tom's children. Yes, yeah. they were. What were your boys' relationships to each other? They were brothers to themselves, and they were, they were sons to us, and they were also, her child was my brother, and my child was her grandson. <laughs> so as. I think that there's about in every relationship. <laughs> we are very closely related. <laughs> Sam, the baby on the left, was born with Down syndrome. Jerry, the baby on the right, died in a fire three years later at the Green's home. Not in heaven, not died. Not in died. He's in heaven, not in died. Um, a couple of winters ago, our home burnt down, and Carrie and Linda managed to get all of the children out, and Jerry was the only one that they could not get out, and he he burnt. He died in the fire, and um, we all miss him. The night of the fire. I had made plans to go to Salt Lake because I was a month prior to having my twins and um, we weren't sure if they were going to come early. And 
we made, we had made plans to go to town that night and I had made a point to not say goodbye to my son because he gets so sad when I do. And several hours after going to bed that night, we got a call on the phone and Tom answered the call and it was Linda. She was at a neighbor's home and said, she had told him that, she said, Tom, the house burnt down and we got everybody out and he just, just gave a sigh of relief. And then she says, except for Jerry, which was my son, my fourth child. And um, there were 25 children in the old homestead we were living in. Later on, we found out that it was a wiring problem. Well, Jerry died right here, and we used to put a board over it, but now my mother, the one who born Jerry, she has his body in a little container, and his body is ash now, but they did find a couple bones and stuff, so... We had a funeral, and I just didn't like the fire. And Jerry died here. Come here often? No, not so often. We go to here more than his grave, though. But I go to his grave more often. Hardly anybody's gone to his grave. I gotta help bury him. I, I just didn't like it. When that fire occurred, the shock of knowing that my son did not get out, I, I just kept shouting no, I mean, in my heart. You know, when something happens that you just don't ever want to have happen and you you want to make it unhappen, but you can't, you know? And then I, I thought, but it's winter, the snow's deep, and we don't have a sink, uh, any shelter. Where am I going to put all my children? Do you have enough time to attend to all your children? I don't have enough time to attend to my children. <laughs> I know that I'm... I'm, I'm in over my head, but I'm also convinced that, that we can make the time. Uh, for the last two or three years, I've been saddled with the, just trying to, to cover the basic necessities, and it seems like every time we start getting close, then a wind comes and demolishes our houses, or a drunk runs into one of our homes and demolishes it, or a fire burns it down, or other things come along just when we're ready to settle in and sets us back. And, you know... I, We'll never quit. <laughs> Why have you done this to yourself, Ray? We put ourselves in this position? What we're doing is a very key and elemental part of our religious belief. And it's tremendously challenging, and commensurately, it's tremendously rewarding. If it wasn't challenging, it wouldn't be just and fair to pour out the kind of rewards and blessings that we receive. So it has to be tough.
dreams for this place? I'll have a great big grassy area for the children to play on and a covered sand area where they won't get so sunburned and a waterfall and we'll have a skating rink and in the winter time it'll be an ice skating rink we'll pour the ice over the cement and there'll be a fireplace in the center and, and it, it might be covered and self-sufficient everything we need to be self-sufficient granaries and cows for milk and make her cheese and yogurt and butter and horses to go explore everywhere with with the different teams take different teams at a time and go explore Tom used to be in the dry cleaning business but now the family support themselves selling magazine subscriptions door to door in Salt Lake City they make the ATAR return trip once a week it's an erratic business, but Hannah and Leanne are often successful, especially when accompanied by a couple of children. Now we'll uh, have you divide up as we usually do, work towards each other. I'll be working elsewhere. Take us around. Let us figure out where we're going. We're not going to need much. We'll just do this one section right over here. Keep up, Jimmy. Okay. is the TV Guide is setting up new service routes in the area where they deliver the TV Guide right to you through the mail each week. And as an incentive to get the, the route set up, they're mm -hmm. often what they call it a 198 special. That is Leanne and Hannah managed to sell only one subscription, earning another 80 pounds for the family, enough to feed them for three more days. Tom is planning hoping to take another wife, to take a sixth wife. And so are we. We would love to have another sister wife. And uh, it's, I, I think it's very exciting because it's gonna be a, a new friend, you know? This, this is my courting shirt. I, I bought it two weeks ago so that when Candace comes to visit, I could look nice. My wives all told me, get, get something nice so that you'll make an impression. What is that Candace? I, it, it really tickles me that my wives are concerned about me making a good impression on her because they like her and they hope that she'll choose to join our family. But Candace's father is, is my adopted son. It's a religious relationship that we have. And though we've known Candace since she was young, it's only lately. Uh, in fact, uh, after she turned 16, that she began to show an interest in the family in a, in a different way than she had before. She has... Uh, She's begun to flirt with me a little, and uh, it's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, he's, you know, he's off in the clouds. He's, he's falling in love. He's, it's that feeling that you get when you can, can't think of much else except the person that you're in love with and that you want to be with. And, and so that's what we call la-la land. <laughs> Are you allowed to fall in love with anyone else? Um, no. I mean, am I allowed to fall in love with anyone else? No, we believe that that uh, that a woman should only be involved with one man and love one man, and and uh, that's that's how it should be. That's how it works the best. The Green family preparing for Candace's visit. There's a lifestyle on offer here as well as a marriage. When a potential new wife is 
getting interested in our family. It works the best when she spends time with the wives and the children and, and gets to know us as first because, you know, that will be a very big part of her life. It's, it's important that, uh, that she does get along with us and does have a relationship with us because she's also marrying us and not just Tom. Candice, tell us a little bit about yourself. Myself. Um, Who are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do you want me to well, Tell us where you live, how many um, brothers and sisters you've got, how old you are. Okay. Um, I'm Candice McKinley, and I live in Manti, that's central Utah, and I have 13 brothers and sisters. And I'm 16. <laughs> when she's 17, then I would uh, be able to take her as a wife without having serious problems with the law. Even though this, is, uh, this lifestyle is still illegal here in Utah, um, this girl's quite mature, quite capable, and, and she has a, a personality <laughs> where she smiles all the time, and it's really, it's really fun to be around her. I guess if say Tom is falling in love with another woman, then I guess we're all going to have to deal with a sort of sense of jealousy watching him fall in love again, but at the same time we are all involved in this new relationship. We, at the same time when he is building a relationship, so are we. It just makes you feel good inside, knowing that he's falling in love again and that we're going to have an addition to our family, someone that's going to have more children and new relationships. It's it's. It's exciting. <laughs> Why aren't you jealous? Well, I... Because it's what Tom wants. Um, and what he wants is what I want. And I might get jealous. I don't know, I'll try not to because I think it'll just cause me more sorrow and sadness than there needs to be. But... I certainly will. You see, I think most of us would find it very hard to share somebody else. It's very painful to share someone else. And it's very interesting that you don't. So I want to know why you don't. Well, the reason I don't is because... because I, I love Tom, and I, and I like his wives, and I, and I want for them what's going to make them happy. And that makes me happy. So where's the hammer? I don't know. I set it down. Laura, did you take the hammer? <laughs> oh. Oh. Turkey? Lauren, <laughs> give me the hammer, please. <laughs> no, give me the hammer. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. This is my son, Lauren. He's a practical joker. Now give me my hammer, quick. <laughs> What do you have to offer a young girl then? A more likely question may be, what does a young girl have to offer me? Yes, she can, she can give me children, but there are lots of young girls that can give me children. These wives have all given me children. Whatever a young girl has to offer me, I already have. There, I can't think of, of, of much at all that a young girl could offer me that I don't already have with the wives I have. What can I offer her? The same thing that these ladies have gotten. That's this family. It's not just me. It's not me they buy when they when they they buy the whole package.
find a girl who would fit in a relationship like this and work well within a family like this is really rare. Uh, it has to be somebody who is secure in themselves. When I see a girl like that, uh, I want to at least uh, get a, some exposure of my family to her and vice versa, so that should the Lord decide to put feelings in her heart for us and put the idea in her mind that she could be part of this, then at least the opportunity will be there. Emmy? Emerald, you must stay up here on this side. Don't go down past those bushes or I can't see you. It may be strange to our children if, if their father marries a woman that is close to their age. When I married Tom, I, he had children my age. So it was, it was a little different. They they'll probably won't uh, they probably won't mother them like the other mothers will, but I think that they could respect them and they could be friends. Do you have a girlfriend now? Yes, I do. Can you tell me about her? Yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous. She's very smart and friendly. She reads very fast. I don't know anybody that can read that fast. And she, she's a really good card player. She plays cards a lot. And I really think she likes me. Well, not everybody thinks that. Do you like being with her? Yes, it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, but sometimes it gets a little embarrassing because everybody teases me. Why do they tease you? I don't know. It's just that Chris and some of my other brothers, they just really don't understand what it's like, and so they tease me about it, I guess. Can you show us a picture of your girlfriend? Tell us what her name is. Yes. I only got this picture. She gave it to me. Her name's Candace. Who gave you that picture? Her. She gave it to me. Does she like you? She has a picture of me. Right by her bed, too. Well, I think she likes me. She really expresses it. Do you worry that his heart will be broken? Yes. I'm concerned that it could be. But, uh, but I think that if he loved her enough that uh, he would want her to do what she wanted and be happy. Is it confusing sometimes to know how to be with a girl? Mm -hmm. I think you should let her make her own decisions and be friendly around her. And I just feel like you should make him feel loved and needed. That's kind of how father acts around my mothers and they just love it. If I do marry a, a, a young wife again, uh, I would restrict her authority over the older children until such time as I felt that she had the experience and the maturity to effectively supervise them. And obviously the time will come when, uh, the time may come when I have a wife that's younger than the children that we have here. I mean, just how do you expect children to understand that their father could have sexual relations with someone who's younger than they are? How are you going to face that in the future? The children that I have have been brought up in a plural family where their father has many wives. And uh, I mean, my children understand about sex and how it works and what it's for and, and that it's confined to the bonds of marriage. And they understand that the way that we have more babies come into this family is that the mothers and I have sexual relations. They don't think anything of it. And if I had another wife, no matter what her age was, they would understand that I would be having children with her and that sex is the way you make babies. I, I doubt seriously they'd give it any thought. I really do. How do you deal with the sort of charge that could be leveled against you by perhaps a British audience that in Britain you'd be prosecuted for child abuse for marrying girls? age 14. Hmm. 
<laughs> and how would I respond to that? For about 95% of the recorded history of man, girls got married when they were ready to have babies physically. I think God had a design there. And I think if it's a mistake for a girl to get married when she's able to conceive children, then the mistake is God's for making them able to be mothers long before they were ready. It's not God who made them physically able to have them have children before they were mentally able to handle it that's at fault. It's our societies, our Western societies, that stopped preparing young men and women for the responsibilities of a family and began shifting that to preparing them to go to work in the workplace. In Utah, it is still illegal for a man to have sex with a woman who is not recognized to be his wife. The authorities do not acknowledge religious plural marriages as lawful. Are you likely to be arrested? <laughs> right now, there's a great push by an anti-polygamous group to get me arrested because they keep telling people that polygamy didn't work for them and, and it can't work for anybody. And then my wives tell people, it works for us. And so they would really like to have me discredited by being arrested and thrown into jail. They've been pushing the county prosecutor to go after me and I don't know what he's gonna decide. There's a chance that any day, the sheriff's cars could roll up the driveway and handcuff me and haul me away to jail. We live with that fear hanging over our head, but if I go to jail for my religious beliefs, I, I'm not ashamed. On July the 9th, 1999, Tom Green and his wives were ordered to appear in front of the county attorney. And there shall be no disputations among you. Tom is still waiting to hear if he will face trial. What are disputations? Does anybody know? If convicted on all counts of bigamy, Tom could spend up to 20 years in prison. Firm as the mountains around us. Consequently, Tom has delayed any marriage plans with Candace.